In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the Born-Haber cycle in order to calculate the enthalpy of formation of magnesium fluoride. Now, in order to do so, we need to write the reaction that corresponds to that. So we need to write the formation of magnesium fluoride from its elements in its natural state. And we only should have one mole of MgF2 on the right side. Now, magnesium fluoride is a solid in its natural state. And it's composed of magnesium metal and fluorine gas. So you got to write the natural states of these elements. So the energy change that corresponds to that reaction is known as the enthalpy information of MgF2. Now, we need to use this information in such a way where we could find the enthalpy information of magnesium fluoride. So we need to write the reactions that corresponds to the lattice energy and the ionization energies of Mg and adjust it in such a way according to Hess's law so that we can calculate the enthalpy for that reaction. So how can we do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is write the reaction that corresponds to the lattice energy for MgF2. The lattice energy is the energy change that occurs when gaseous ions react together to form a solid ionic compound. So in the case of MgF2, the gaseous ions that are combining will be the magnesium plus 2 ion in its gaseous state plus two fluoride ions which will produce one mole of solid magnesium fluoride. So the energy change that corresponds to that reaction is negative 2,957. So now we need to write a reaction that corresponds to the first ionization energy of Mg. The ionization energy is the energy that's required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. So we got to start with gaseous magnesium, and we need to take off one electron, so it's going to turn into Mg plus while still in a gaseous state. With one electron removed. So the energy change for that is positive 735. Now let's move on to the second ionization energy of magnesium. So we're going to start with this ion and remove another electron from it. So now we're going to have the magnesium 2 plus ion still in the gaseous state. and another electron is removed from that ion. And so the energy change that corresponds to this reaction is positive 1445. So notice that we can cancel Mg+. Keep in mind, our goal is to add up all the reactions until we get this reaction. So that's our focus. We already have solid magnesium fluoride on the right side, so we need to make sure that we don't cancel that term. Now, what reaction can we write for the bond energy of fluorine? So the fluorine molecule contains a single bond. The bond energy is the energy required to break this bond. And that's going to produce two fluorine atoms. So the bond energy for F2 is the energy that's needed to break one mole of fluorine, which is in its gaseous state into two gaseous fluorine atoms. And so that's going to be positive 159. Next, we have the electron affinity of fluorine. Electron affinity is associated with the energy change that is released or absorbed in a reaction when a gaseous atom acquires an electron. So in this case, we're dealing with gaseous fluorine. So a fluorine atom acquires one electron to produce the fluoride ion. And the energy change is negative 328. Now, we can't leave that reaction like that. We're going to have to modify it. 
And here are some clues that tell you why. Notice that you have two gaseous flowing atoms. Here you have one. And the gaseous flowing atoms are not part of this reaction. We have a gaseous flowing molecule, but not a gaseous flowing atom. So therefore, we need these two to cancel, which indicates that we need to multiply the bond energy reaction by two. Plus, we have two fluoride ions on the left, which means we need this to be two in order for them to cancel. So we're going to multiply that reaction by two. So I'm going to put a two here, another two there and two fluoride ions. So now the energy change was negative 328, but we need to change it. Since we multiply the reaction by 2, we need to multiply the energy change by 2. So negative 328 times 2 is negative 656 kilojoules per mole. So now let's see what we can cancel. So we can cancel the two fluoride ions that's in the gaseous state. We can also cancel the two gaseous fluorine atoms. And we can also cancel the electrons. Here we have two electrons on the right side and two on the left side. So far, we have F2 on the left. The only thing we're missing is Mg on the left. So let's move on to the next reaction. Now, before we do that, there's something else that we can cancel. I don't know if you caught it, but I didn't see it before, but I see it now. We can cancel the magnesium plus two ion. So now let's move on to our next step. The enthalpy of sublim let me say that again. The enthalpy of sublimation of magnesium. So what does the word sublimation mean? Sublimation is a physical process where a solid is directly converted to a gas. It skips the liquid phase. So the sublimation of magnesium will be changing solid magnesium into gaseous magnesium. And that's an endothermic process. So that's why the energy change is positive. So it's positive 150 for that. And now notice that we could cancel gaseous magnesium. So now we have everything that we need. On the left side, we have solid magnesium. So I'm just going to write that as Mg. And on the left side, we have gaseous molecular fluorine. So plus F2 gas. And on the right side, the only thing that's not canceled is solid magnesium fluoride. So because we add, because we added all six of these reactions to get this reaction, to calculate the energy change of that reaction, all we need to do is add up these values according to Hess's law. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have negative 2,597 plus 735 plus 1445 plus 159 minus 656 plus 150. And so you should get an energy change of negative 1,124 kilojoules per mole. So this value right here is the enthalpy of formation of solid magnesium fluoride produced from its uh, elements in their natural states. And keep in mind, that's the enthalpy just for the formation of one mole of magnesium fluoride. If you multiplied it and made it two moles, this would double to negative 2,248. So that concludes this video. Now you know how to use the born haber cycle in order to calculate the enthalpy of formation of magnesium fluoride. And if you have the enthalpy of formation of a substance, then with everything else using the same process, you can calculate the lattice energy using Hess's law. So hopefully this video helped you to understand how you can do so with these uh, reactions. So make sure you know what these reactions or those values mean and how you can write the associated reactions with them. And by the way, if you need more chemistry videos, just check out my channel and uh, look for my chemistry playlist. I have a lot of videos organized um, from topic to topic in order of a typical chemistry course. So thanks again for watching this video and have a good day.